The prevalence and power of negative information is evident not just in media coverage, but across a whole range of human behaviors over an extended period of time. You've just seen all kinds of examples of proverbs from different cultures, of quotes from playwrights, from writers, from journalists, suggesting that negative information matters more than positive information. I want to talk a little bit about why that is and then explain how that matters for the nature of media coverage and the functioning of politics and political institutions. I'd like to start by introducing this idea of an asymmetric impact between negative versus positive information. Imagine that we could illustrate the impact of a given unit of information on, let's say, our attitudes over time in the following graphic where there would be an impact that is positive or negative, and then that positive or negative impact would gradually decay over time. A unit of positive information might look something like this. So in, uh, there's the introduction of a unit of positive information that increases our attitudes in a positive direction, and then that kind of positive attitude slowly decays over time. You might imagine that a given unit of negative information might look exactly the same way, but the reverse, as in the impact of positive information and negative information are in this version of the world symmetric. Each has a roughly equivalent impact on our attitudes. There's lots of evidence in past work to suggest that this is not how the world works. This is not, certainly not how our attitudes work. The relationship between positive and negative information is asymmetric. And generally speaking, a given unit of positive information has a somewhat more muted impact on our attitudes, and that decays over time. And the impact of a given unit of negative information is, in comparison, quite sizable. Put differently, a unit of positive information might increase our attitudes slightly in a positive direction. An equivalent unit of negative information might push our attitudes in a negative direction in a much larger way. Now, why might this asymmetry exist? There are two different stories that I've found quite helpful. One is drawn from evolutionary biology. Imagine that you're an animal and you're out there looking for berries. You're looking through bushes and looking through berries and you're faced with two pieces of uh, information, one positive and one negative. We're going to put those along this dimension, positive to negative information. On the positive side, you see that there are some berries. Okay? On the negative side, you hear that there is some rustling in the bushes. You need to be the kind of animal that doesn't weight those two things equally, that thinks, well, the berries seem pretty good, but the rustling in the bushes seems particularly problematic. And the reason you need to be that animal is because the best possible thing that can happen in this circumstance is that you get berries. And the worst possible thing that can happen is that you get eaten and you're dead. That is to say, in this instance, and in many other instances, the negative information is much more consequential than the positive information. You need to be an animal that focuses on that negative information. Another story that I've found helpful is from the impression formation literature in psychology. Imagine when you're meeting a new person, you're subconsciously ranking them on 10 different dimensions. Your overall assessment of that person is not an average of those 10 dimensions. Your overall assessment of that person is a weighted average where the dimensions on which that person was weighted negatively matter more than the dimensions on which they were weighted positively. Put differently, it just takes one small negative piece of information about someone for you to change their overall, your kind of global assessment of them in a quite profound way. Why might that be the case? One of the reasons that might be the case is that when we meet new people, or in fact, when we meet any new piece of information, we go in with marginally positive expectations. Our expectations, positive expectations, may be central, to our negativity bias. Imagine, for instance, that you're meeting a new person and you have two pieces of information and those pieces of information are kind of equivalently positive and negative. The positive piece of information is that he has a nice shirt. And the negative piece of information is that he fidgets too much. Now, if your expectation is neutral, your expectation of that individual is that they're going to be neutral, then the shirt is about two units po more positive than you expected and the fidgeting is about two units more negative than you expected. But imagine now that your expectation of that person is not neutral. Your expectation is marginally positive. When you meet a new person, your expectation is this person is probably a little bit on the good side. If your expectation is good, now the shirt isn't two units better than your expectations. It's less than two units better than your expectations. 
And the fidgeting is not two units worse than your expectations. It's more than two units worse than your expectations. Now, this is a point I'm going to come back to later. Your expectation going in to a given information environment may be central to your perspective, to your perception of whether a given unit of information is positive or negative. If you go in with a positive expectation, then negative information is further away from that expectation. And you may weight that more outlying information more heavily. How does this matter for media coverage? Well, here's one example. Let's say we take years of crime in a given middle-sized American city. A balance of violent to non-violent crime is such that, in this case, between 10 and 15% of crime is violent and the remainder is non-violent. But if we then take that city's newspaper coverage of crime and we categorize news stories by violent or non-violent crime, violent crime makes up about 30% of all news coverage. That is to say that violent crime is covered about twice as much as we might expect it to be covered, given its frequency in the real world. Here's another example. Let's say you take 10 years of newsstand sales of the news magazine Maclean's in Canada. By newsstand sales, I mean sales of the magazine physically at the newsstand, not home deliveries. So let's take those newsstand sales and let's see what the relationship is between those newsstand sales and the tone of the cover of Maclean's. So we're going to take every Maclean's cover weekly for 10 years, we're going to take all those covers and we're going to categorize them as positive or neutral, or negative covers. And then we're going to estimate a model which controls for the time of year and the topic of the covers and a bunch of other factors, and extract from that the impact that just the tone of cover has on newsstand sales. And if we do that, the estimated impact is such that a negative cover sells about 30% more than a positive cover, controlling for all these other factors. People buy McLean's more when the cover is negative. Both the demand for and the supply of public affairs news coverage is consequently tilted in a negative direction. There's going to be more negative news than there's going to be positive news. That has both positive and negative consequences. On the one hand, we pay attention automatically to the rustling in the bushes, not just for the sake of survival, but because we live in a complex information environment and we have to choose what pieces of information to pay attention to and what pieces of information to not pay attention to. We need some shortcuts to help us manage what to pay attention to and what not to pay attention to. And focusing on negative information may be a really effective way at reducing the amount of information that we need to deal with over the course of a day or even over the course of a few minutes. Focusing on negative information allows us, for instance, to do things like say, we're going to elect a government and then that government is going to go ahead and govern and please just bother me when something is going wrong and there's something that I need to do about it. A focus on negative information in media coverage can have negative consequences as well. It may be that the public, as a consequence of the kind of media filtering of information, has a skewed view of the crime rate or a skewed view of the nature of the economy or the accomplishments or failures of governments. I don't regard the prevalence of negative news as a necessarily good or bad thing. On the one hand, negative news coverage may be a really valuable way of keeping track of managing a very complex information environment. Negative news coverage may also be critical to our being attentive to that news. That is, in the absence of negative news, it may be that the public is not attentive to news coverage very much. That said, the biases that come along with negative news coverage, the biases and the way that it represents the world, may have consequences for the way in which we understand the world around us. One final note, it's worth recalling that mass media are just one of the institutions critical to representative democracy that is designed to primarily first and foremost, monitor error. When we talk about separations of government, for instance, we're focused on the ability of different uh, parts of government to serve as checks on each other to monitor error. When we talk about federalism, often we emphasize the ability of one level of government to serve as a check, as a kind of error correction on the other level of government. 
And when we talk about media as a fourth estate, we talk about the same thing, the importance of media as a way of monitoring error. In this way, we have designed political institutions to process information in roughly the same way as the human brain. We prioritize, in order to make a complex information environment manageable, we prioritize negative information. We've designed political institutions, in some ways at least, to do roughly the same thing. Whether that's advantageous or not in the long term, whether we should be thinking differently about how institutions process information, given how humans process information, that I think is an interesting question for future research.